Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of PMP's Den of Antiquities. Today, we got another awesome intro in the Star Wars Perspective podcast. Today, I got Dakota. No, I'm just kidding. I still, I, the, the fr to phrase this, I, I, I did one with Dakota yesterday and I called him <laughs> Noah on accident <laughs> because we were talking about like cosplaying and stuff like that. And I told him, I was like, you know what? Inside joke. I was like, I'll call him Dakota on our podcast oh, to, to, to get back at him. And he's like, dude, you should totally do that. So no, but this is Noah. This isn't Dakota. This is a funny little inside joke. Um, but what's going on, man? How's it going? It's going good. Had a good relaxing weekend. Just chilling, uh, playing Battlefront, both versions actually throughout this weekend. I've just nice. been relaxing. Packers don't play, so I've got nothing to look forward to. I'm, <laughs> I'm relaxing. Dude, I'm so sad that they don't have crossplay because I really wanted to play Battlefront. Like, because like nobody plays Battlefront, man. Like, I have it on the PC, and like mm -hmm. nobody plays. I'm like, ah, I've been trying to find. Hopefully, maybe if they come up with another one or something like that, it can be more cross platform or something. So, yeah, I promise their community would at least feel so much more together right now if they had cross-platform because there's still people on each platform playing it. It's just you'd have so much bigger of a pool if you combine. Oh, yeah. I know my issue is Brendan plays PS4, and I have PS4. I just don't have PlayStation uh, Plus on it because I, I rarely ever touch it. Right. Um, and I also have like pretty much every hero at level 100 on Xbox, whereas on PlayStation, I'd be starting fresh, which will be painful. So, yeah, I had to do that for uh, because I had it originally on Xbox, uh, mm -hmm. and then I kind of stopped playing Xbox and I moved to PC and I had to restart all the characters. And I was just like, oh, that's yeah. you get crapped on, like, you have to have like mm -hmm. the cards, like the star mm -hmm. cards are like everything, or else you're just yeah. gonna get. You got to go through those growing pains. So that's right. It's it's great that you can work for them because that well, that that's not how it was in the beginning. As you know, we had that whole uh, debacle of people. Getting Oof, hit, hit yeah. Hit yeah. The game has come a long way for sure since then, and I'm glad. I love how it ended. Was um, I, I honestly think it's I have a little more fun with it than I did the original. Mm -hmm. I know that might be sacrilegious to say, but like <laughs> playing with friends to me has always been ten times better than playing anything by myself. And I, I still love single player games, but. You know, getting to argue, getting to go back and forth, having those fun discussions late at night when you're just blasting droids. Like, it's 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 the best. Oh, yeah. Especially when you got, like, if you got a squad doing, like, the heroes, mm -hmm. uh, like, 4v4 or whatever, or 3v3, like, those those are awesome to, to okay. do when you have a gang together. Um, um, but the first question I usually ask everybody when they come on this podcast is, what got you into Star Wars? Oof. Okay. Um, this is a tough question for me because I genuinely will never know. Um, Dude, I'm entire, the same way. I'm like, the same way. I straight up just, I feel like Star Wars has always been a thing ever since I was there. Um, it's all I really remember. Like, I mean, I remember a lot of things from my childhood, but I always remember that just being there. Um, I remember the day, I think it was like 2003, 2004. Um, there was this golden fact. Actually, I stole it from my parents and I have it still here. Um, but they re-released this. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, yeah. And me and my mom went to go pick it up from Walmart. And that was the first time I really distinctly remember watching it. I mean, I, I was like three or four. And I don't know why I remember it so distinctly as I do. Um, but I watched it straight through. And I watched them obsessively, from, probably from the time that I was four, like to as far as I can remember. I mean, I watched them obsessively. And when I got tired of those, I would watch all the, all the behind the scenes. And obviously the prequel movies were coming out at this time. My mom was really protective, so she did not let me go see Revenge of the Sith as a kid in theaters. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> which I was really hurt about. Um, Attack of the Clones, I really wasn't even mentally capable of processing that, so I didn't even, I obviously wasn't there. Um, but that, honestly, I'd have to say it started with that because it is my only first distinct memory of really coming across Star Wars. And I watched the hell out of those things, like behind the scenes, all of it. I just I went straight through. Um, my mom was probably one of the biggest influences on that. My dad, he he kind of liked Star Wars. He wasn't it wasn't like Die Hard or anything. Mm -hmm. um, but my mom also was the one that first took me to uh, go see the Five Hundred First Legion. Oh, had, cool! Um, some I think it might have been Timothy Zahn. I don't even remember, but there was a book signing, um, something going on. I think it was Heir to the Empire. Mm, um, yeah. That's a great but book. Th there was some book signing going on, and they had the 501st there. And I got my picture with uh, Darth Vader, and that for some reason always stuck with me. So, a little <laughs> sidebar that 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 also was got me into cosplaying and all that. Nice, nice. Yeah, we'll definitely talk about that a little further down the line because you have a pretty awesome Darth Vader cosplay. So, we, we got we to gotta break into that. Um, yeah, it's funny. I, I kind of like the same, I'm like the same way as you. Like, I don't really remember 
a time before there was like Star Wars. I just kind of remember it always being on or always being around the house. I always like to say that I was just born a Star Wars fan because like yeah. I don't. <laughs> it helps me because I'm like I don't remember what movie I watched. If I had to guess, it was probably like one of the originals. It's probably mm-hmm. like A New Hope or like Empire or something. Um, but yeah, being being able to say I was born a Star Wars fan is a little bit better for me because I'm like I want to go back. I want to see which one I watched first. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you had to pick one thing about star wars what would be your favorite thing like what calls you to star wars uh ooh, this it's is tough because there's a lot but i think and this may change overall but and this this might sound really dramatic but i think my favorite thing about star wars in this universe is the greater sense of purpose there's this greater mm-hmm. sense of good versus evil and good is always going to prevail no matter how many times evil comes back um there's just this sense of adventure and there's this sense of a different universe that i'd much rather be a part of yeah um, <laughs> fair it, it's just this world that I, I i myself regardless of the good and the bad would love to see myself immersed in because i just think it's so unique and it's so different um, and it's, it's cool to kind of get immersed in that every single time I watch or uh, take part in Star Wars media. Heck yeah, dude. Heck yeah. I, I, I can get down with that. We, um, I, I'm going to ask you this cause I know you're a big, I don't get a lot of video Star Wars video gamers on here. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of people who played the games. Uh, we just got the, uh, is it, it's Jedi survivor, right? That's the title for the next Fallen yeah. order. Game. Yeah. What did you, have you seen that? And if so, what did you think of it? Uh, I saw it. Um, it was, I liked it a lot, um, but I'm not going to overhype it as much as a lot of people did, um, mm-hmm. because when we saw the trailer, um, they were like, oh my God, new gameplay and all this and stuff like that. I'm going to be honest, a lot of the gameplay that I thought I saw from the trailer wasn't really all that new. I mean, we saw a few like moves and a few cool things. I remember he picked up a stormtrooper that had one of the uh, big mini guns mm-hmm. and then forced that stormtrooper to shoot his own guys and then just killed him. I'm like, damn. Um, and there were a few little cool, like new gameplay elements, but nothing that I was like, Oh my God, um, I would have loved to see. I think they hinted at a blaster, um, being introduced in this game. Yeah. Um, we didn't really see any of that, at least even a tidbit of it. Um, I don't even think we saw it on his character once throughout the trailer. Um, but I also appreciate the fact that they're keeping everything relatively hidden because you don't want to give away too much in a trailer. Oh, for um, sure. So I'm I'm excited for this game regardless of what they show. I don't care if they have um, Vladimir Putin as a final boss. Like I think <laughs> anything absolutely ridiculous, and I, I'd still be all excited for this game. So right on. What did you think? Because uh, uh, I know some people don't like the idea of like having like a cross guard, kind of like how Kylo Ren has his like vents out the side. Mm-hmm. What did you, what did you think about? Because he kind of has like to me, it looked like it was like a great sword or something like that. Because the sword looked longer his saber looked longer when he had the cross guards out. But what do you, what did you think of that kind of design and them implementing that? I'm excited to see it. Um, I think lightsabers, any type of variation that we can get that doesn't look ridiculous is cool. Um, and I'm more excited to see, I mean, it's a little tougher because then you wish that you saw more variation in the actual movies. Mm-hmm. Um, because the only thing we've seen so far is Kylo Ren, but I mean, the universe is going to expand one way or the other. Um, so I'm excited to see it. I, I'm really interested to see what route they go with his lightsaber in this uh, game because, I mean, it was dual wield and then it was not, and now it is again, and then it was like combined. Um, there's a lot of cool things that they're, they're, they're going to do with it, and I'm excited. But yeah, I, man, he is, he is like the most versatile lightsaber I've like ever freaking seen. Like you're great. saying, it could be like a single blade, it could be a double blade. It, like there's so many different things. But, um, mm-hmm. and then the last question I'll kind of ask you about it, then we'll move on is like, who do you think that guy is? The pale guy. Like, I'm like, what the? Everybody's like, oh, it could be like Sabayoth or it could be Sifo-Dyas or something like mm-hmm. that. And I'm just like, I think he's somebody, like, I think the most, likely at least for me is that he's from the old republic era and yeah he's been trapped forever so i'm gonna be honest and this is kind of embarrassing for me i really don't read as much star wars uh media as i'd like to um, same I really, dude I, I really haven't gotten in depth into the books like brendan and i always joke with him that nobody reads um, <laughs> but i i like my knowledge of a lot of expanded universe sometimes isn't up to par with everybody's um certain things like especially the games cal katarn uh, going back to another video game character is one of my favorites um but i genuinely have absolutely not the slightest hint or clues to who this guy could be 
Um, and I think that's it's a good thing for me because I'll be a little bit more excited if it's somebody that we do know or someone that's even somewhat established already. So I I, I got nothing for you. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. All right. All right. Um, what did you think about? Uh, are you into like the the animated stuff? I, I think you are. The last, last time I remember, uh, like the Clone Wars and stuff like that. Yeah, I joke that I'm a Rebels hater, um, but I, I absolutely love Clone Wars. Um, not to the extent of some other people. Like, I, I can't, like, I know some people can name episodes and arcs just off the top of their head. Um, mm -hmm. But if you kind of go to me into remembering things, I, I'll easily do it. Um, Rebels, I still have not gotten through. I, I started in the first season. It was just really painful for me personally. Yeah, um, first season's rough. And yeah, I, I've heard everybody be like, first season's rough. You just got to get through it. And I'm just like, well, no. So. Yeah. Yeah, they have a lot of um, a lot of uh, the original trilogy. They have a lot of that sprinkled because it's around that time period. They have a lot of like the melodies and all that stuff sprinkled in. So like, I really appreciated that. But um, yeah. the reason why I was asking you about this is I wanted to see what you thought of the new Bad Batch trailer. If you've seen that, mm. yeah, Just um, I absolutely. I, I was. I was not. I, I know Bad Batch was a little controversial online. Um, some people loved it. Some people were like meh. Um, I was neither one of those. I, I thought it was pretty good um, with maybe a few disruptions here and there. Um, I like the trailer. I'm excited to see it. I hope we get a little more exploration in Cody. Um, oh, dude, I was so excited to see Cody, man. Seeing him oh. is, is always a great thing. Um, I'd like to get more explanation as to why, you know, Captain Rex was like, I mean, I mean granted. Um, and that's my problem with Revenge of the Sith, which we can go into later. But um, Captain Rex was, you know, very emotional about it. And Cody was just like, boom, get his ass um so like hopefully they have some type of uh deep dive into that plus the clones are still around so i i still want to see more post clone empire integration and see how nasty it got um so i i'm i'm really excited to see it i, I liked season one um and i hope they build off of more focus on the clones just in general heck yeah dude that that phase three armor that they were like like the clone battalion like comes down and they're like kind of like transferring to stormtroopers i'm like oh dude i'm hoping like they like they sprinkled in like mount tantus with like all the experimental stuff and mm -hmm. I, I really hope we get to see some some really cool stuff from that yeah uh, um so going to the star wars community what kind of got you in to the world of cosplay and what kind of led you to vader so as I had mentioned before, um, there was that book signing that I had gone to with my mother, um, where I had seen some guy dressed as Vader. And for the first time as a kid, like it had come across to me that I had actually met Darth Vader. And that was the coolest thing. Now, as I got older, obviously you figure out like Santa Claus, that wasn't really him, but that there's still something that stuck with me that like that, that was the coolest feeling to have as a kid. Um, and as I got older, I started just looking at more Star Wars cosplayers and especially Darth Vader ones. And there are still adults who see that and they're like, wow, like you go from the, the childlike reaction of, oh my gosh, that's Darth Vader to the adult-like reaction of, wow, that's like the coolest thing I've ever seen. Um, we've always wanted to dress up as kids, no matter what, whether it was Batman, um, Iron Man, or some crazy ridiculous hero. Um, and obviously Star Wars has been the it thing for me. And so seeing Darth Vader, it'd be like, especially Anakin Skywalker and his journey of watching that throughout the prequels. Um, I obviously, I, I just think Darth Vader is the coolest fictional character in history. And I think he has the coolest looking costume with the most intimidation sure. and everything like that. So I'm yeah. like, kind of an easy brainer. Now that was not my first costume. Um, my first costume into the, into cosplay in the 501st season was actually an impulse buy. Um, I was in Disney world and I had, um, I was on a trip and I was going through one of the gift shops and I saw this like $900 Kylo Ren helmet. Ooh. Um, and I'm just like, Oh, that looks good. And so I started doing a little research online while I was standing there, like debating whether or not I should just drop almost a thousand dollars for this thing. Um, and they had said it was the most accurate at the time. So I bought it. And then when I got home, um, I'm like, okay, I got the helmet. I got to get everything else. <laughs> so it, it just became this impulse buy of lightsaber, like sleeves, boots, all this type of stuff. And it just piled on very quickly. And that was it. That was my first one. What kind of drew you to Kylo? Is it just like, oh man, the helmet looks sick and now I got to complete the rest of the ensemble? Or did you like, when you were watching the movies, did you feel something like, oh man, he's a cool character. Like I kind of resonate with him or, you know, whatever, whatever it is. What so, kind of drew you to that? 
believe it or not at the time i actually thought his character was really annoying um, but I, th this was pre uh, rise of skywalker mm -hmm. um i had seen force awakens seen the last jedi obviously at this point so that that's for added context i but i i was absolutely in love with his costume from the force awakens mm, um yeah, yeah. But, and i loved everything until he took his helmet off um i think it would have been a lot more better suspense if he had kept it on at least until later in the trilogy mm -hmm. but i said i loved his voice changer i loved his appearance i loved his ruthlessness i mean i'll never forget in force awakens when he just murdered the village of people just like straight off like that no problem seems a lot of people forget that um but i i just loved like it's like okay we've got another villain i like bad guys like this this is cool and he had and i thought at the time he had potential to really dive into that a little deeper um and but most of it was just impulse right all right cool cool and then so you have uh excuse me for my lack of knowledge so you have the kylo and the vader is there another one that you i know you're working on Django. Spo spoilers but like uh, yes was, Django is the one I'm currently working on, um, and I'm actually closer to getting it done than I'm not, um, unfortunately, nice. with a move coming up and then a special Disney trip in January and all, all this like stuff. I've just tried to be really careful about putting everything on hold um, because I only have a few pieces left, but they're the most expensive ones. The Jetpack, a Screen Accurate one is going to cost me anywhere between five to seven hundred bucks. Yeah, um, expensive. For leather sure. for the Django costume is going to cost me six hundred and fifty um blasters depending on if i get accurate ones could put me up to a thousand which is stupid but it is what it is yeah. um so yeah i have most of the costume pieces just the last ones are the most expensive right right for sure for sure um what would you i always ask this about cosplayers because i know there's so many people that kind of just they don't know where to start they don't mm -hmm. know where to like kind of what would advice would if just about cosplaying in general and also if they wanted to do darth vader what would you give them advice for to kind of start off it so a few different things and i'll go with the general one first like if you're just deciding which character um honestly like the best thing for me is there are so many people that sit there and like well should i be the right height should i be the right weight should i be even the right gender for it it's like listen if you have a character that you are absolutely die hard over then if, if you are interested in, in costuming, then that's that's what you need to do. Um, don't if, if you do a character and you spend a lot of money um, that you're not really that invested in or interested in, um, you're going to end up selling that costume. Like, I promise you, like, it, it, I've, I've seen it in this community happen. I've done it myself. Like, you're going to lose heart for it. And you're going to sit there and think, this is a lot of money I'm sitting on. Why do I need this? Um, so the biggest thing I can, you also very early on should d determine what type of budget you have for it um, and what type of direction you want to take it. If you want to take it the screen accurate route, if you want to take the more fun route, like, and, and just do what you want with it. Um, because very early on, if, if you kind of decide which direction you want to go with it, you can save yourself a lot of time. You can save yourself a lot of stress. Um, you can save yourself a lot of money. Um, going over to kind of the more Vader thing, back is what I said before, I've been approached by so many people on Instagram and TikTok who um, were under six foot or something like that, or just didn't feel comfortable with their height being what it is. And they're like, hey, I really want to do Vader, but you think it would look weird as like a 5'8 guy or a 5'9 guy. And I'm like, unfortunately, there are people in this community that will judge you. There are people in this community that will say like, you do look off. Um, and if you even want to talk from a screen accurate perspective, you could say, yeah, maybe you do. But at the same time, um you if, if you truly love this character and you truly want to get into this thing um just do it like that that's all i've really got to say if, if you want to be vader like it, at the end of the day there's, there's you, you'll have some doubters and you'll have a few weird people to criticize but everyone's going to mostly appreciate you and look like okay he worked a lot really hard on that costume he spent a lot of money he looks good who gives a shit so very cool man very cool so this is probably going to be the hardest question that i ask you going mm -hmm. from the phantom menace to the rise of skywalker and you can add uh rogue one and solo in there if you want to or if you just want to toss them to the side you can just stick to the skywalker saga um okay. what is one thing that kind of calls to you or i say like favorite but it just like one thing that kind of like speaks to you personally from each movie that speaks what do you mean by speaks to me like i, like, I just love or yeah like it could be something that like either you thought was really cool or something that you just like love. like a lot of people for phantom menace they're like oh man i really love the pod racing you know like yeah. 
what just something that either like me like man like that that makes that movie for me or like i really i really like it about that movie okay um and this is a fairly easy one because i always find good things in every single movie whatsoever I, i'm not a I, I promise that I, I regardless of any trilogy or anything like that i'm not going to be a negative nancy regardless of what dakota for says sure. for um, sure. well wait, there's so, difference like i was saying before we before we go into this side i mean to interrupt you there's no, a difference between joking about it Mm-hmm. And like actually being like, hey, because like I, I'm not a huge fan of the sequels, but there's still stuff okay. I find that I love in it. Mm-hmm. And I always poke fun at it, just like people poke fun at the prequels and the original show. There's a difference yeah. between being like, no, you're not a Star Wars fan if you like this and being like, oh, you know, that's garbage or whatever. But just saying it kind of like offhanded, like jokingly, you know. Yeah, there's a, there's a difference. So people worry about each other's opinions too much in this community sometimes. And it really for sure. a lot of people. Yeah. But, um, okay, so it's unfortunate. Like, I'm gonna have a lot more than one thing about each movie, but we'll you start- can Nate rattle off as many as you want to. I usually just say one because people are just like, Oh, when I ask that question, it's like boggling. But yeah, go, you oh, can yeah. go as much or as little as you want to, man. This should be an easy one. Um, so for Phantom Menace, number one, Darth Maul, um, absolutely oh, yeah. coolest part of the movie. Uh, the lightsaber fight between all of them was just, it was, it was I, I, I disagree. <laughs> I think Darth Maul is garbage. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But I really wish we saw more of Darth Maul throughout the prequel trilogy. Um, I think that was the biggest mistake that George Lucas made. Um, but yeah, more Darth Maul. Uh, Qui Gon was absolutely great. Um, even McGregor, phenomenal performance as young Obi Wan. Um, oh yeah. It's so weird because I know that the movie is objectively bad, but I can find so much I like about it. Like I, I know personally that it's not a good movie, but I still enjoy watching it. Pod racing, absolutely love it. Um, yeah, even the politics and the early like seeds of all that being planted, I, I absolutely loved. Attack of the Clones. Um, obviously, number one, my favorite part of the movie is Jango Fett. Um, I think the introduction of Tamora Morrison, who in my opinion has the coolest voice in human history. Oh yeah. Um, which originally for me made watching the Clone Wars tough um, because I was obsessed with Tamora Morrison as a kid. I played Star Wars Bounty Hunter. Like he was my Tobey Maguire as a kid. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hearing his voice in the movies and in the games, I was like, oh my God, this this guy is him. Well, especially um, in Battlefront too, because he like narrates everything, you know, it's so cool. It was, it was like the coolest, like mentioning Tobey Maguire, it was cool watching him be Spider-Man, but then playing the video games and actually having his voice in there. It's like, it, it was, it was the coolest feeling ever. I'm just getting goosebumps thinking about it. Um, but yeah, <laughs> Tomorrow sure. Morrison, easily my favorite thing, almost about the entire prequel trilogy. That's, that's going to be a hot one. Um, uh, Samuel L. Jackson. I absolutely love Mace Windu and his role in this. Uh, he has like the coolest, uh, he has the coolest interaction with Count Duke right before he jumps into the battle. Um, Battle of Geonosis is still all, like pretty much my favorite Star Wars battle from the moment they oh, start yeah. the to the end. Epic. Um, I, I think it's the coolest. I'd put it above Hoths. I'd put it above like. Also, it's the coolest in every video game too. Like all the Lego Star Wars games, like the arena slaps. Like it's yeah. so fun. Yeah, as soon as that smoke comes to, or all the dust comes down, and you see just lasers flying everywhere, it's, it's oh my god, that's the coolest battle. <laughs> Um, Natalie Portman um, taught me how to be a man at the age of like four or five. <laughs> um, she taught me what I wanted in life. Uh, so I always appreciate her for that. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, Hayden Christensen <laughs> did great as a young Anakin. Ewan McGregor also great again. Um, I, I really wish that they would have gone a little bit more into the Jedi Order. Um, so it would have given us more emotional context behind Order 66. But I, I liked everything they did about that. Um, Zam Wessel, I feel like is a little underrated as well. Um, she's kind of cool. And I like that speeder chase that they did at the beginning. I think Bo- Book of Boba Fett could learn a thing or two from that. Um, but That's yeah. For sure. That's for sure. Also, the battle between Django and Obi Wan. Um, oh, I don't super care cool. It's so cool. Uh, finally, seeing a blaster guy give it to a Jedi and actually get out alive. That was the coolest thing. Mm-hmm. All of them to get his head chopped off later on, but that's not important. RIP, um, RIP. <laughs> the space battle between Django and Obi Wan with the seismic charges. Wow. Like, <laughs> there's so much good in that movie, and I, I, I know I, I won't ever listen to anybody who says that one is objectively bad, even though I know you could probably say it because it's, it's probably my favorite guilty pleasure of, like ever. I just think like the to, to me I I like all the prequels I think they're all good I just think that that for me the dialogue in two is the choppiest but I yeah. think uh, as far as like a, as a storyteller's perspective mm-hmm. I 
I can't really find anything wrong. Like the really the only thing that I see a lot of people argue about is the the dialogue. And hey, man, sometimes it just yeah. it is what it is, you know. Yeah, and not not to jump into comparisons, but that that's that's my biggest like point of contention and, and point of positivity when it comes to the prequel trilogy, especially in comparison to the sequel trilogy. At least in my opinion, um, I believe that regardless of what you want to say about dialogue or anything like that, at least it was all headed on the same direction there. Mm -hmm. that there was always an idea of what we're going to do as a story and we're going to stick to that and we're going to go towards something. Um, and granted, maybe the sequel trilogy didn't have uh, the benefit of having another trilogy after it that they could kind of look forward to. Mm -hmm. um, but I just, uh, my, I love the prequel trilogy because it feels like it's all in one direction there there's no up and down and all over the place like the story is the story and they were going to stick with it um i love i wish you would have gotten to see an anakin killing a little more of the tuscans um, yeah, yeah that would have been cool because i'm grim but that's how that is <laughs> uh yeah, that would have been would have been cool with revenge of the sith um oh man this is a tough one because there's so much <laughs> it's like um, the whole movie <laughs> just everything yeah. <laughs> i'm just gonna stick with that because i liked everything about it Mm -hmm. um i know you said everything positive but there's one negative i have and i really wish that we got to see more van kenobi one going at it uh and, and like a fun um just you know being them and i wish we would have gotten to spend a little bit more time with the jedi order throughout the prequel trilogy because then i don't care what anyone says like i rewatched revenge of the sith objectively not too long ago and i'm like without the context of the clone wars this movie really emotionally seems really empty for a lot of the stuff that they're showing like I, like at the time order 66 like all these people were dying blowing up i'm like who gives a shit like i've never i've ne like i don't know these people like they're uh, all background characters yeah. yeah they're all background that we've seen for like 10 seconds like okay that's that's great they're dying who cares um and i think that was the only mishap but i mean you can only do so much in two three hours of a movie so I get what they were going for with that. Release the four hour cut. I know you yes. have it, Disney. I know you Someday. have it. Release it. <laughs> Someday we'll be lucky enough. Um, after that, do you want me to include shows as well, or are we just sticking to Dude, live go action? Go for it. Yeah, you want to you nail shows? Go for it. Clone yeah. Wars, um, everything. I, I, I can't yeah. think. Yeah, we'll, we'll just stick with that. It's just so massive. It's hard to be like, oh, you know, like this, this, like it's just so mm -hmm. like, like you said, like it. I think the great thing about Clone Wars is, is it harmonized a lot of the problems people had with episode two and three. Yeah. Like it filled in a lot of gaps. And I think that was like the main thing that was like really great about it. I don't care what anyone says. I believe that the Clone Wars saved the prequel trilogy. And I believe without the Clone Wars, people wouldn't be looking back as fondly on the prequel trilogy as they are now. For sure. Um, I think it added so much context and I think you can't, and it's unfortunate because it's hard to get through, especially for someone that's new to Star Wars. It's really hard to say, listen, this trilogy is okay, but you have to watch seven seasons of this just to get more <laughs> context for that. Like it's, yeah. it's tough, but Clone Wars is special because it, it was really glue. And maybe the sequel trilogy can get something like that, which would be phenomenal. I hope so. I think they, I think it needs it. Honestly, I think, I think so too. Um, but yeah, Clone Wars Rebels. Uh, who? Uh, <laughs> James Earl Jones. James yeah, Earl Jones back as Darth Vader. That was that was cool. Um, that was special for a lot of people. My biggest gripe with Rebels is I get that they were trying to do like the Ralph McQuarrie style. It's just to me, it doesn't land. Like no. it just doesn't. Like I I I respect it, but like there's a reason why some stuff is 2D and then some stuff is 3D. Like Ralph McQuarrie mm -hmm. stuff looks great because it's 2d but when you brought it into 3d like uh my I, I showed my friend and she was like she was like yeah she's like when they talk like watch their heads like their heads like never stop moving when they talk they're like always like this and i'm just like as soon as she said that like literally the whole time i'm just like it's always focusing on it's just their heads like they move so much but um Ugh. but no it, it definitely i agree I, I, the first season's rough i think it does get better and I think it also gets better because they add a lot of Clone Wars stuff in it later down mm -hmm. the line. So you kind of get hyped idea. from the Clone Wars, you know? Yeah. Captain Rex, obviously, from what I've seen, is is a great aspect of it as well. Ahsoka. Um, yeah. So that's that's all I got for Rebels. <laughs> no worries, man. No worries. Um, what comes after Rebels? Uh, we've got... Is that it up until Rogue One and Solo? Timeline-wise? I mean, I guess Andor. you could... You, Andor. Andor, yeah, 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 yeah. Andor, I gotta throw that in there. Uh, Andor, everything about it. Um, 
I think uh, the acting is some of the best we've seen in Star Wars, if oh, not the best. For sure. Uh, narratively, um, script-wise, everything like that was is about as perfect as you can get. We've never seen something like that in Star Wars that have so heavily focused that much on uh, narrative. Um, and it was cool. Um, I also loved that we finally got more of a universe that looks like we could actually live in it. Yeah, um, yeah without sacrificing the look of star wars i know there are certain star wars personalities online and youtube and, and whatever that completely disagree and think that it it, it took them out of it but I, I think that personally um the way that they set up the sets and everything like that i i actually prefer that over the bubble that the mandalorian the most yeah was. that's what i was gonna say is like i think it was cool that we they didn't shoot on the the volume like i think mm -hmm. it was like it really brought that kind of like old school like a new hope style vibe yeah. to the to the show and that's like i said after watching a new hope and that that first show like i was discussing with people i'm like andor is the closest thing to a new hope like at least visually and kind of aesthetic wise that we're going to get probably in a long time i said a new hope was so ragtag like that i mean the sets were just all over the place at least outside of the death star um i'm like this this closely matches the vibe of a new hope the best set i've ever seen um, so that was special about that. Andy Serkis killed it. He stole the oh, show. Um, his lines and especially his ending was so heartbreaking. Like I, I, was I can't swim. <laughs> I, I was stressed about it for a week, and they 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 they, they did everything perfect with Andor, and I'm so excited to see more. Um, Kenobi, I forgot about that one. Um, oh yeah. Kenobi Vader, obviously. Um, yeah. I'm a little biased, but he was almost the coolest that we'd ever seen him. Mm -hmm. um, hearing james earl jones technically in his full glory mm -hmm. um was cool and i'm excited for the future of darth vader because now we get james earl jones forever um i've loved video games and i've loved seeing people do their interpretations and impersonations of that vader but at the end of the day james earl jones is james earl jones you're never gonna oh, yeah. be able to you can't beat it, it. <laughs> um, and it's always noticeable especially with fallen order and like like I, I like i said i appreciate what they try to do it's just not james earl jones um ewan mcgregor once again always kills it uh, Vivian LeBlair. I don't know if I said her name correctly, um, but she was absolutely impressive acting wise uh, because she portrayed a little bit more emotion and more intellectual capability that I thought most kids her age could. Um, she played she, Leia. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I didn't. I didn't know her no, name. You're, you're oh, she, good. she nailed it. She, she nailed she it. She did such a good job, and I can only hope that my kids someday turn out to be that much of a smartass. Um, <laughs> But she she was absolutely phenomenal. Um, even elements of uh, Reva's character, I absolutely really liked. Um, I wish that some of the plot would have been a little more streamlined. Um, yeah. And that if they wouldn't have done the coat scene with her walking inside Obi Wan's coat, I'd say the series is almost perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of little there's a lot of little uh, what I like little to call like nitpicks that like kept Obi Wan from being like a phenom. Like Obi Wan was a good show. But it wasn't mm -hmm. like a phenomenal, like at least for me, like it didn't like blow me away. Cause like you say the code thing for me, it was the lightsabers when he, they do like when he, when she's get, about to get tortured and then yeah. he kind of does like that star killer thing. Mm -hmm. The lightsaber feels like it's a baseball bat when it's hitting the stormtroopers. Yeah. Like, he it feels like weird. he's like hacking at them where it should be like zoom, done, zoom, done, you know? Yeah. For me, that Which was kind of. They had no problem cutting up people throughout the series, like that stormtrooper that got split. Like that's. Oh it yeah. Like, it was that guy. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't like a gore graph issue. I don't know. That that was really odd, but. Um, just and after. Since, the, no, since you're a big Vader guy, I wanted to ask you how, because my biggest thing, like really my biggest thing about Obi Wan was that fire scene. Mm -hmm. with vader what did you, i want to i want to get your opinion on it because i think vader would have just pushed that fire away and gone after obi-wan but what what do you how do you how do you feel about that yeah that scene was awful uh, at least in my opinion um i think at the worst like so the fire portion when he's burning obi-wan i thought it was perfect like it was oh cool. yeah coolest thing we've ever seen in a long time like oh he's he's about to give it to him yeah um the fact that vader one didn't just straight walk through that fire because we've known at least in uh, legends or whatever this up until this point his his suit is pretty durable at least from fire um palpatine made sure of that, uh, that, that <laughs> was the problem again um but it's it's very durable suit it had no problems really walking through um or either like you just said he just pushes it aside i really don't understand why they just made him stand there i think there were so many different better ways to write it 
you could argue that Vader wanted to toy with him or something like that, but he was literally that close to just burning him alive. Like, I, I don't really understand. Like, it didn't make any sense that people were saying, well, he's just toying with Obi-Wan. It's like, okay, what's the, like, really? That's not how Vader really operates. He can be sadistic, but he's not, he'll toy with people, but not to the point of just letting them go. Right. Um, also, like, he blames Obi-Wan for, like, literally everything. Like, I don't, mm -hmm. don't see him getting away and, like, going – because uh, I saw this one argument of somebody said, oh, well, he wanted to get like the rebels. He wanted to figure out where the rebels were. No. I was like, okay, but literally at the end of the show, like when they're about to have the epic battle, uh, the Inquisitor's like, we have the rebels like on the string, like let's find them. And he's like, I don't give a fuck about those rebels. I'm going after Kenobi and just like dips and goes after Kenobi. So I'm like, he obviously doesn't care about the rebels. Like what? Yeah. What's going on? <laughs> and if you wanted to play devil's advocate, you could maybe argue, you could maybe argue that by that point, he was just so pissed off at losing Kenobi twice. He said, now this is my chance. I'm just going to take it. Um, because he did get away from the fortress as well. Um, oh, as yeah. So it's like, you, you maybe could, like I said, I don't agree with it, but I, I try to play devil's advocate and try to understand everybody's perspective. Sure. I don't see it that way, but you could argue that maybe he's just so pissed off at this point that he said, all right, enough is enough. This this is my time. Um, but yeah. That's, that end scene, dude, where he, it's like mm -hmm. half Vader, half Anakin, man. Like any gripes I had with that show, like went out the window when I saw that scene. Like that, like it, yeah. it almost brought me to tears, like how like emotional that scene is. You know? It's like in dating, everyone has their red flags and everything like that that like would keep you away from a situation, or, like would keep your mind clear. But then they have that like one specific thing that they say, and they're like, "Oh, who cares?" Like it's red flag, <laughs> whatever. It's all right. Don't worry about it. Like that's that's all right. That's cool. So that that end fight scene for me was was a big positive. I wanted to see way more. I want to see at least ten to twenty minutes of them going back at it. Um, I wish we'd have gotten to have a little bit more emotional. Uh, conversation between them i think it would have been really cool if padme was at least brought up once um just to kind of add some emotional context to the situation but overall um i think that they they did what they needed to on that could have been better could have been way worse um i thought it was pretty solid you mentioned boba fett i'm curious to hear your your opinion on boba fett the boba okay fett. Um, I'll get to that when we come around after Return of the Jedi. I'll swing to it. Fair enough. Fair enough. Sounds um, good. Okay. So what else we got? We had Kenobi uh, Solo. Solo, oh, yeah. Um. <laughs> so I like this movie. I enjoyed it upon first watch. Um, I really enjoyed Alden Einrich. I think I said his name correctly. Um, I think he did a very underrated job. Unfortunately, I don't think his voice matched. Harrison Ford's his best, but I think outside everything that he was great. Donald Glover's performance in this is underrated. I absolutely love him as Lando. Dude, I killed it. More. I want to see more of him. Where's um, the Lando show? Disney, where's the Lando show? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I love seeing the Millennium Falcon. Um, I think it was really cool because it also gives us context to see how badly Han beat the shit out of that thing. Um, seeing it in this like beautiful, like it's like, oh wow, okay, that's different. Um Woody Harrelson was great as usual. Uh, we saw Jarvis in there for a, um, a decent amount. Like, I, I think the acting was pretty solid and there was nothing. Um, che more Chewbacca is always great. I think this is just like, I, I've, I've described certain movies, especially Fast and Furious, as just dumb fun. Yeah, um, I, yeah. I would have to put this under that category. Um, had its own issues, but overall, like, I wasn't like, oh my God, I hate this, or I just, like, it was, it was fun. It was a good heist movie. This, yeah. You know, like, this, just throwing the heist. I didn't enjoy it. There was one scene that really took me out of it where they were trying to play off the suspense of like, like Chewbacca was hanging off the train and like, it, like they were trying to play off the fact that he, something might happen. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, hold on. <laughs> really? <laughs> like, really? This didn't. Yeah. I was like, all right, whatever. Um, but yeah, Rogue One. Um, I have to say once again, that's kind of a whole movie type thing. Um, Rogue One was absolutely special from beginning to end. Uh, more of that narrative uh, combined with great action. Um, that's the difference between this one and Andor, even though it's, it's it was Andor's director. He took part in Rogue One, How, or was it the same? How did that work? So, I think he, um, so Garth Edwards directed it, and then I think yeah. he was having a problem with the end. I think the guy that directed and wrote Andor kind mm -hmm. of came in and helped with the ending, or at least that's my interpretation of what he did. Okay. So I know he at least had a part in Rogue One. Um, and it's good to see very similar. It's just very similar. Um, 
Darth Vader, once again, stole the show. Oh, yeah. Um, I think Rogue One is an amazing movie. But I also hate to say this, it wouldn't get talked about uh, as much as it does if it didn't have that scene, unfortunately. That's um, fair. That's fair. Great movie, but, you know, Darth Vader is always going to come and steal. No steals the show, man. Yeah, it's just awesome. <laughs> um, acting was superb. Also, some of the best we've seen in Star Wars, which is great. Um, the action, the space battle. I remember watching it in the theater. Um, the space battle at the end was like, it gave me goosebumps because for the first time, I'm like, I'm watching original Star Wars. This is so cool. Um, that was special. Um, Krennic, his actor, um, his character, absolute awesome. I, I wish more of him. He was so cool. Um, we got the introduction of Death Troopers. Um, yeah. Which have some of the coolest armor. And someday I'd like to make a costume for but it intimidates me because it's expensive as hell. I bet. Um, but I, I kind of fit the build tall and slender. Well, you got the height for it, right? Because you're you're super tall. You're like 6'5", aren't you? I'm 6'4". Six, 6'4", six four. Six four, okay. I gave, I gave you an extra. <laughs> I gave you an extra. 6'5", six, six, if my hair goes up fully, but 6'4", six, six, regular. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. So you could definitely pull that off. Yeah. Because they're like um, super tall, aren't they? They're like supposed to be like like seven foot almost, aren't they? Like like I cannon? Or I don't know about that, but anywhere I think between like 6'5 to 6'9 is kind of like the general... Yeah. Yeah, they're not one exact height, maybe, as far as I'm aware. At least in Rogue One, they weren't, but you know how Star Wars likes to change. I think in Andor, they were different sizes, too. Like, the two that come with uh, Daedra, I think they were kind of different heights as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Death Strippers were absolutely awesome. Um, seeing more of the Death Star in action, seeing that instead of it just always being this planet blowing up thing, they could use it to literally just target cities. Um, that was cool. Uh, variation and difference. Um, just more original trilogy goodness. So, yeah, uh, up next, A New Hope, where it started it all. Um, it's really sad to see this movie kind of fall out of love when it comes to Star Wars rankings, because I think people forget how good it is just by itself. Um, people say that it's aged. People say it's all like, and I'm like, I don't know if people really watched it as much as they should, because it's it's special. Also, it's um, revolutionary, dude. Like, they had to create all of that stuff. Like, uh, I don't know if you watched the... Uh what was it? It was uh, Industrial Light and Magic, the one on yep. Disney Plus. Like, oh, yeah. they created everything. Like, they're like, yeah, we didn't have it, so we made it. I'm like, J you made it? Like, what? Yeah. Same That's with crazy. like the computers that they made for the great, like, yeah. CGI. Like, this this movie literally changed Hollywood for forever. Mm -hmm. um, and outside of just talking about how groundbreaking it was, because I know that can sometimes push bias, but like, I, I just put it as simple as like, you watch that movie and you at no point feel like, like, I know it's aged per se, but there's no point where you sit and think like this, this takes me out of it. How, like the star Wars universe, how aged it is because it's like, it's, it was just so well done for the time. Um, yeah, I think I, 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 it's one of those movies that you genuinely, I like, you can try as hard as you can. I can't find a flaw with it. I can't, I try, I, I like, I try to nitpick it and I know I have some bias, but I, the whole movie is for this one is, is I feel like appropriate. Um, yeah. Empire strikes back. Ooh. Um, <laughs> this is tough for one because this is one I'd also just like to say, like I, I once again, no problems whatsoever. Um, absolutely perfect from beginning to end. I think this is the first time that we got a different director for star Wars and they absolutely knocked out of the park. Um, Darth Vader once again, steals the show. And I believe this is when he looks his coolest, at least costume wise. So that's, that's my favorite aspect of this. Um, I like darker, more realistic themes. So seeing something like New Hope was great because it's this good, you know, coming out on top, doing whatever the hell they do. Um, and then this just comes in as like an emotional blow. Like it's just like when New Hope was woohoo. And then an Empire was like, aw. Um, Darth Vader, yeah, once again, special. The introduction of Boba Fett, technically for the first time, um, was absolutely cool. Like this is the one that really like New Hope was the introduction, and Empire was like, yeah, we're Star Wars is around for good. Um, so yeah, once again, and I hesitate to say the whole movie, but yeah, is your Vader the Empire Vader? Yes, the Empire, okay. this, this Vader is uh, Empire Strikes Back. Okay, I couldn't I couldn't remember. I know there's there's so many different versions of Vader. Um, yeah. So okay, cool. And not a lot recognize that but there are very there's like blatantly obvious differences in each movie that you don't realize until you look at it and you're like oh yeah. um but yeah return of the jedi um mark hamill kills it in this carrie fisher kills it in this harrison ford also kills it in it as per usual uh, all the main cast do exactly what they need to um my well, my favorite part of the movie is the final battle 
um, between Darth Vader and Luke, I feel like is super underrated. Um, it's, it's easily the most, almost the most emotional battle in the entire series, For sure. um, the entire franchise. Um, the choreography even picked up a little bit, which was cool. Um, because throughout this original trilogy, you know, we've seen like slow, basically old men just whacking each other with sticks with very little, like maybe old fashioned uh, fencing style technique. Um, so it was cool to see them pick up the intensity because it's mostly been awful up until this point. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was cool. Um, fine. Death Star 2. I don't think that was the greatest idea of them just all of a sudden rehashing that. Um, you're like, oh, well, all of a sudden, you know, here it is. Ta da. Um, it's back again. Um, but seeing the Emperor in person live action for the first time was great. Um, should have been the last time in that timeline that we saw him, but it is what it is. Um, yeah, Return of the Jedi was special, but it's not as good as the other two. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Hey, this is your Star Wars story, man. You can, you can say whatever you want to. Um, you can say Yub Nub's your favorite character and he destroys uh, every other character. <laughs> and I'd oh, be like, hey, yeah. man, that's what you think? That's, you know, this is, yeah. <laughs> this is a story for you, man. <laughs> Um, after this, we've got Mandalorian, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the closest thing. Yeah, Mandalorian, um, absolutely special. It revitalized Star Wars is the way we know it. Took over the globe um, with Grogu. Um, is this absolute sensation. I really like the narrative that we're going with. In both seasons, I'll just kind of combine them into one. For sure. Um, uh, I don't want to say Pedro Pascal because he spent a lot of the time out of the suit, a lot more than people realize. Yeah. Um, so I have to give credit actually to Brendan Wayne, who spent a majority of the time in costume. Um, he was absolutely phenomenal. Um, and he was this. He wasn't the. He was the guy with the pistols, right? He he was doing the pistols, and then the other guy did the the combat, right? There was two guys, wasn't there? I think so. I know Brendan. So believe it or not, Brendan Wayne, and this is really sad to say, um, but Brendan Wayne, the majority of the time you're seeing that costume on screen, he was in there about eighty five percent of the time. Okay. Um, okay. I know most of the combat was maybe the other guy, but like, I mean, like even the simple shots from him sitting inside his N1 to having conversations with like regular characters, it's majority of the time Brendan Wayne. Interesting. Um, okay. That's okay. because I think, I mean, I'm not going to go into it, but Pedro Pascal just does not like being in costume. Um, he's voiced that openly and he's been kind of unfortunately a little brutish about it sometimes. Um, so Brendan Wayne, I believe, like did a phenomenal. It's kind of like the Iron Man thing, where it's, I mean, granted, it's Robert Downey Jr., so he can do whatever they want. <laughs> yeah, <he's, laughs> but like majority of the time, he's not even there, and he's just, you know, it's his voice. Um, sure. So Brendan Wayne was great. Um, Rogu special, Grief Karga, um, absolutely. Mando. <laughs> absolutely love seeing Carl Weathers come around. Um, the return of Boba Fett, probably the, like the coolest, the most talked about part of the series. So cool. I absolutely loved in the Mandalorian how they took all of their cameos outside of Luke Skywalker and they just shoved it in your face. Like it wasn't something that like built up throughout the episode. Like when we first saw Ahsoka, literally within seconds, she just walked straight in like it was nothing. Mm -hmm. um, that was so cool. With Boba, within a few seconds, we just see Slave One drive through like it was nothing. And I'm just like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. um, they're just coming out with all these hard hits very early. Um, seeing the Luke Skywalker return, uh, original trilogy Luke Skywalker. Oh, for the first time in it messed me up, dude. It messed um, me up so much. I was in shock. Like I had, I like, I'm getting goosebumps even just thinking about it now. It's so cool. Like it, it was so special. Um, that was a huge moment for a lot of Star Wars fans that still is talked about to this day. It was. It was. Well, we never got to see Luke in his prime, and that's the closest we get to it. Mm -hmm. You know. So yeah. it was just such an emotional moment. I'm, I'm sure I'm just preaching to the choir to you, um, mm -hmm. but it's just, yeah, man, when that X-Wing comes in, I was just like, I couldn't remember seeing the X-Wing just fly past. And I was just like, no, no yeah. way. Like, yeah. you're not going to do that. Like, it was I thought so it was like Cara Dune or something like that. I'm like, or anybody like from the like regular Republic. Mm -hmm. But then as soon as we saw the cloak, we all knew it was, it was so, it was so, yeah, yeah. yeah it was nuts. I, I can't even get over it. Um, yeah, season two. Um, yeah, it was all special. Uh, Book of Boba Fett, man. Uh, wow, I this is <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, because there was it's such it's it's weird that that's that's the biggest thing that I've got to say for it. They could have gone in a lot of cool directions, and I like what they did. 
I'm a little bit more grim because if I were in Boba's situation and I had gotten dragged across the desert, starving to death and all that, I would have taken no mercy on those Tuscans once they let me free. I would have let that kid die or I would have strangled him to death myself. Like, he, like I thought that was very odd, um, especially in Boba's character, to be like, hey, you guys just tortured me almost to the brink of death, but you're cool with me now and you gave me water, so let's let's chill. Um <laughs> But I thought, well, but I, I, regardless, outside of that, I thought the arc with that was cool. Um, his gaffy stick was all, really awesome. Yeah, Everything that's sick like making that. that. Yeah. It was so cool. Um, Tamora Morrison, uh, number one favorite thing part of the, uh, about the show, obviously. Anytime that he speaks, um, it, like I said, it's I, I rewatch the show sometimes just to hear him talk. It's cool. Oh, yeah. Stuff. Dude, he's awesome. And he loves playing Boba too. Like that's the thing. Like I've never seen somebody know so little about Star Wars and just like not care, but love a character. So like he mm-hmm. loves playing Boba Fett. Yeah. You know? That's, that's the coolest thing about tomorrow. And I think that's why he's my favorite Star Wars actors. Cause you take someone like Pedro, for example, um, who anytime that he can be out of the suit, he, he's ecstatic. He's like, I don't want to be in that. But you, you take someone like tomorrow who anytime that he gets to put on it, I think he, he was talking about putting on the Django arm and he's like, it's an honor. I feel like, man, like I feel yeah. like I'm different. Empowered. Like, yeah. He's like, this is cool. Like uh, any chance he gets to wear it, he's absolutely in love. Um, and he loves interacting with fans. And so I'm the biggest more Morrison fanboy ever. I think his voice is cooler than Vader's. I'm, I'm a little, I'm, <laughs> I'm 110% like full fanboy for him. I feel that. I feel that. Um, I liked the introduction that they gave the Mandalorian in the season. I just wish it would have been in the Mandalorian, not in the book of Boba Fett. Fair um, enough. 100%. I loved, I loved seeing, I think that was some of my favorite Star Wars is seeing him go and cut up that, uh, um, pl- that one place. Yeah. Um, with, like, the, the dog people. people. Yeah. The dog people. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll never forget my jaw dropped when he split that one guy in half. Dude, I know. Was, right. I was like, I, I didn't think they'd, they'd, they'd do that, but okay. <laughs> And it just, it just, it frustrates me because they clearly know what, like they knew that episode was going to slap. I'm like, why didn't you apply that to Boba? Yeah. Like that's like, they tee Boba so hard for Mando. Like he's beating the crap out of stormtroopers. He's using his leg rockets, which is like the coolest thing ever. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's just like, that's what we wanted, you know? They, they did such a great job of introducing him in the Mandalorian. And that's why it's unfortunate that he feels like an entirely different character in the book of Boba Fett. Mm-hmm. Um, you could also argue that in, in the Mandalorian season 2.5, um, in the middle of the book of Boba Fett, uh, Boba could have easily been a part of every single one of Mando's adventures that he went on through that entire thing. Mm-hmm. Um, we could have actually honestly even seen him go visit Luke, like in Ahsoka for the first time, like he could have been there. Um, they, they, that was just a huge missed opportunity on their part. And I really hate that they did that. Um, because I feel like the book of Boba while has its cool moments. The, the thing that I look at is it's the biggest missed opportunity. Um, yep. and a lot of people don't even realize this, but the book of Boba Fett actually had more viewership. Um, the, the first episode had more viewership than any, uh, Mandalorian episode, uh, to this point. Dude, it's Boba Fett, man. Everybody yeah. loves Boba Fett, you know, like it's, yeah. And it's, it's so sad because, like I said, he, he lo- like this character has an immense amount of history and it feels like he just took a back burner to some guy that showed up like a year or two ago, mm-hmm. um, even in his own show, which just blew my mind. Yeah. Um, I know you said mostly positive. There's one thing I got to go on um, with no, Luke I mean, Skywalker. The only thing that I say is like, if you're ge- if you're going to say something, which you've done with everything that you've said, like mm-hmm. just have an an- don't just say it's bad. Yeah. You know, like, oh, it's garbage. Like explain why, which I think you've done with everything you've said so far. So. You're okay, good, man. You're good. Uh, well, I got to bring up uh, Luke Skywalker. Um, I feel like, and the direction that they went with Grogu and all that was absolutely awful um, in the Book of Boba Fett. Mm-hmm. I really don't understand how. And granted, we don't know fully what Grogu is mentally capable of right now. Um, but it was so odd to me that you have this episode where clearly Luke and Ahsoka have met up. Ahsoka mm-hmm. has finally taught Luke about a lot of his pit past, like his history, the stuff with his father, everything like that. Like if they've had these discussions um, about attachments and everything like that and what attachments can do and what attachments, like how the Jedi Order reacted to his attachment and how that led to his, you know, whatever. It's really crazy that you can hear that the Jedi shunned your father for attachments. And then you look to a child who basically has the mentality of a toddler and say, you can choose between being a Jedi or a little gift from your old dad. Like, 
Really? You're, you're, you're going to just be taught about what happened with your father and how the Jedi t treated his attachment. Now you're just going to say, okay, well, Grogu, little, little toddler thing, figure it out. What do you want? Cool lightsaber or something from your dad? It's like, come on. Um, it also has just felt completely weird because at the same time, like we spent so much of the Mandalorian season one and two of finding Grogu this home um, and, and getting back with the Jedi so he can use his talents. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, like that happens. And then we're like, okay, Luke is just like, all right, see you. Goodbye. <laughs> um, yeah. sends, sends him off in his ship and we're right back to square one. It's like, now what? Um, I was really excited up until that point for me. I mean, I still am excited for Mando season three, but I really wanted to see Din Djarin grow as a character by himself. Um, right. because we, we had this huge journey. And the Mandalorian, I'm sorry, up until uh, like Mando season one and two, it's it's Grogu. It's that That is pretty much the main draw of the show. That is who the show has been centered around. I want to see more of the Mandalorian. I want to see it centered on his, on the narrative of him. And I want to see his character grow. And I feel like just shoving Grogu back with him, just out of nowhere, like, it's like, okay, well then what was the purpose of a lot of what they had gone through through season one and two? And in, in my opinion, it also makes like the scene where Luke like goes crazy through all these people just to get to him look so weird now. Cause we, he just gave him back just like that. It's like, what was the point of any of that? Um, well, like you said too, like it was cool seeing Mando kind of just by himself in the first episode, mm -hmm. just kind of doing mm -hmm. his own thing. Yeah. And I think it really te it, it like really like I'm cool with Grogu coming back to Mando, but I think it should have been done like you were saying, like maybe in like the later half of season yeah. three, like maybe after he um because Gains he's going to like repent to be a Mando again, like be a mm -hmm. true Mandalorian, like let Din go through that by himself and then yep. bring Go Grogu in, you know? Yeah. I just wanted the Mandalorian season three, at least in some aspect to finally focus on the Mandalorian. Like I want yeah. to see character growth, seeing him by himself. If we get to see him deal with the trauma of being away from Grogu for a little bit longer, then maybe that return in season three would have felt so much better to us, especially when it all comes to a narrative like climax. Um, so I, that's, that's what I was really hoping for, for that. I really wanted to see a little bit more of Mando on his own, um, and explore what they're going to do with Mandalore and all that. Like it could have been so much more interesting. Um, but yeah, I, it sucks to hear that, uh, Boba season two is canned. Um, oh, is it? Cause I thought, I thought I heard that it might still be a, be a thing. You heard that it was canned. Don't tell me that, man. I want, I want a season two. I need a season so, two. I gotta tell you this and I, I'm, I, boy, um, I'm in trouble for this. There's there's one contact that my group knows. Uh, man. All, all I'm all I'm saying is keep keep it light and fluffy. Keep it light and fluffy. Yeah, they decided to act season two of Boba in order to give him more of a role in season three and four of Mandalorian. Okay, I, I might actually be okay with that because mm. if they give us Boba from the Mandalorian season two. In the mm -hmm. Mandalorian, I'd be more okay with that than more of like the light and fluffy Boba that we got in season one if they continue to do a season two. I mostly you know? agree. I just want to see the Mando season two Boba be in his own show. like For sure, 100%. Like the, I think that's the best case scenario, but I also don't trust them to pull that off as well. Like, um, dude, how how gold would it be? Okay, so he's a daimyo now, which honestly, I'm cool with. I, I wanted him to be a daimyo. And just be the ruthless killer. Like I think the crime boss thing is actually a really sweet idea. Mm -hmm. Have him go up against Crimson Dawn, dude. Crimson yeah. Dawn's still around. Bring back Kira from Solo. She's taking on freaking Vader and Bounty Hunter. Like she has her own badassness. Like make Crimson Dawn and then throw more bounty. That was another thing about Boba. I wanted to see more bounty hunter. We got Cad Bane, but like bring back Boss. Bring back Dingar. IG88. You know, like throw throw so much at us. You know. Mm -hmm. I think if you brought Andor's director and gave Boba a kind of gangster style, like maybe like TV shows, like specifically mm -hmm. revolving around that, or maybe going back to the underworld and, and cleaning that, like doing something interesting. Like if you gave it more of a narrative and you kept Boba from speaking as well. See, and that's the difference with Boba Fett is so many people are like, well, Boba doesn't talk very much. He doesn't do that. Um, it's like, if you watch Boba, like he doesn't speak in public much, but what really would get interesting is where you see him speak to the few people that he's close with and cares about. That's where it's interesting. You don't want to see him talk too much openly, but you've really got to emphasize that when he's with people that he cares about or he's close with, that's when he opens up and it's cool to see. Um, not when he's joking about, you know, I'm the diamond, I'm supposed to be getting these gifts. Like, okay, like for real. Um, 
but yeah, that's that's that with Book of Boba season two. I, I had a lot of hope for it, and I have a lot of hope for his character going on. Um, after I finish Django, I think I'm gonna go Book of Boba Fett. Uh, hey, yeah, that's what I, that's what I'm working on right now. I say working on right now. I'm in the in the realm of working on it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's at least compared to some of the uh, to the other screen accurate ones I have. As far as I'm aware, it's gonna be a little bit cheaper. Mm-hmm. Um, Less armor. Ju- just yeah less armor um more more like the the black suit covers more of his body with a lot less like really weird trinkets and stuff like that um and the leather isn't too expensive either so but we'll, we'll, we'll yeah that's if i if i fin- ever finish my jacket <laughs> um sure. after this oh we got force awakens um force awakens is absolutely special to me because it came at a time where um i didn't like clone wars at this point um, I didn't get into it until I was like maybe 19. Um, it took me a little while to, to finally watch it and get through it, sadly enough. Um, so at this point when Force Awakens was announced, I had had no Star Wars since Revenge of the Sith and the little video games that we had had. Wow, that's I crazy. Had now, granted, I was still playing Battlefront over and over and over and over again. For sure, um, for sure. I was still like obsessed with Star Wars. I just hadn't, you know, Clone Wars, like I had nothing new since Revenge of the Sith. So this came at a time where it's like, oh my God, we're back. Um, I absolutely love Kylo Ren's character. Uh, I think Daisy Ridley did a great job in the movie. I don't care what anyone says. Um, Han Solo being back, Harrison Ford absolutely killed it. Chewbacca, like, um, Leia, the, the, there's so much to love about the movie. And I really like the direction that they headed with the friend or were going to head with the franchise. I think it was a great kickoff. Um, and I really wish they would have capitalized more on what they established in that movie. Um, last Jedi. Uh, next. No, kidding. <laughs> no, kidding, kidding. Next no, question. Kidding. Um, <laughs> oh, Dameron. Um, Oscar Isaac, phenomenal actor. Moon Knight really got to show that, and I'm happy for that. Oh, dude, Moon Knight was um, awesome. I loved his X-wing scene in the beginning, where he's taking on that thing all by himself. It was so cool. Very Fast and the Furious, like kind of mm-hmm. like moving around everything. You know, he, he yeah. very, felt like very hot rod esque. You know, like racer style. Very cool. I forgot to mention from the previous movie, Finn. Absolutely loved him, and I had oh, so much dude. hope for his character. He was uh, one of my favorites. Uh, the potential of him and Ray just being this dynamic duo. I was like, this is so cool. Dude, as soon as he ignited that lightsaber and like he took a stance, I was like, oh, I was like, it's going to go down. Yeah. And it was cool because like then he didn't absolutely destroy the storm for like there was fight. There was gravity mm-hmm. like it wasn't so like, you know, it was, yeah. it was cool. It felt good. Um, that's why The Last Jedi. Um, yeah. Uh, Poe Dameron. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Poe Dameron. Gary Fisher. She was great. Mark Hamill, for what he was given, was great. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. We can leave it at that, man. That sounds good. I, I like that. I like that. Let me just move Rise on of to Skywalker. Rise. <laughs> yeah. Um, Lord. Uh, Rise of Skywalker. Um, Kylo Ren's helmet and his costume design. Dude, really the cool. glow, the red glow. Is that what you're talking about? When he just, mm-hmm. dude, so the red sick. glow and the scenes where he's like in his kind of like his chamber that's just all white. Um, the helmet looked so good when it was glowing and stuff like that. Um, we finally got him to use his voice changer and his helmet a little bit more again, like he had in the previous movie. Um, seeing him walk into that, uh, it was the conference room table and just drop that guy's head on the table. I was like, oh, okay. Um, Daisy Ridley, once again, solid actress as she has been throughout the past two movies up until this point. Um, give the girl the yellow lightsaber though, dude. Holy crap. Like we've never gotten a yellow lightsaber in Star mm-hmm. Wars. Yeah. And it was so cool that she got it at the very end. It was like, make it just like the, you know how in Return of the Jedi, uh, Luke, think there's like a deleted scene where he's like building his lightsaber and like, kind of putting mm-hmm. it together literally just put that at the beginning of rise of skywalker her like making it and like how cool would it have been to see a yellow lightsaber throughout the whole movie i really would really wish she would have gotten that earlier i don't know why they didn't do that i don't it's just weird um double bladed yellow lightsaber like that this seems like that'd be the coolest thing you know so cool um lando was great ian mcdermott i he was he was great i don't know why he was there but he was great (laughs) Hey, he had the drip, man. When he came back, those robes—I don't know where the heck he got those robes from—but that was that was a uh, 
He was like, he's like, I'm bringing the prequels back. <laughs> yeah, he, he gained some fashion uh, yeah. in the time that he was. Uh, oh, yeah, so. transferring his essence or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I don't. Wow. Okay. So yeah, Ian McDermott's great once again. Don't know why he was there. Um, uh, Billy D. Williams, phenomenal. So cool to see him back. Oh yeah. Um, what the hell is the uh, Pose kind of ex girlfriend? Um, um, it starts with a Z. I, what, is her name? what is her name? Zori, right? Yeah, Zori Bliss. Yeah. yeah, I always see her action figure everywhere still to this day on, on Walmart bags <laughs> and stuff. But yeah, it's like her, Lando, and then like Leia. I feel like I see those three all the time. Yeah. Um, regardless of how little her character was in it, I thought her costume design was cool. I liked her little helmet. Um, she's it was cool Battlefront nod too, because like when she's talking to Poe on the rooftop. <laughs> They're yeah. playing like the battlefront music in the background. Oh, I didn't notice that. Or like, well, no, maybe it's episode. No, sorry, my bad. Not battlefront. Episode three, the yeah. video game. Yeah, I might have to. Oh, well, I say I'm not going to go back and watch, but I'll, I'll take. <laughs> <laughs> you can go, go find the clip on YouTube. There you go. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll do that before I pain myself. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, there's there's a few really cool elements in this movie. Uh, I liked the idea of the space battle. I think it was a little ridiculous having you start a story with their own Death Star laser. Yeah, um, not absolutely. It did look up. cool though. It was ridiculous, but I, I think like the lightning with all of them sitting there, that fleet, it, it, it yeah. did have some like it had a mood to it. You know, the cinematography in the be- beginning was Kylo Ren. I wish we would have spent a little more time with him on Mustafar exploring. Um, Nobody even knew it was Mustafar. Yeah, That's watching that at first, nobody knew that was Mustafar. Um, and like Michael Jackson power sliding into that dude, like that was mm-hmm. sick. All of that was so cool. Um, I wish we would have got to see more of that. And then the beginning when he walks into the temple, like the lightning, and then he ignited his lightsaber out in the middle of nowhere for no reason. That was very dramatic and very cool. Uh, that's something I would do. So I like that. <laughs> cool. Um, but. And then, like, hearing James Earl Jones' voice boom in, like, uh, when he was, I've been every voice inside your head. Like, that, that, that was, was so that, cool. Whoo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was cool. So, yeah, there's, there's a few cool moments in, in uh, Rise of Skywalker. And I watched that, I believe, in L.A. Um, oh, when it cool. came out, which was it was a cool experience. The theater was pretty packed and everyone was going nuts or screaming um, <laughs> for not the right reasons. Um I really enjoyed the crowd reactions throughout the movie. That's all, especially towards the end in that one scene. Uh, I, I loved hearing the crowd as they reacted to that in person. I know a lot across TikTok, we saw a lot of the like people go, oh, like a groan or just be like annoyed. I didn't think that was real until I saw it. And then I was like, oh shit, yeah, people are, people are not happy. Damn. Um, so, yeah, that's that. I don't know. Do we have anything after? No, I think that's it. No, I, th- I think as far as like canon goes, like that's like where it ends for Star yeah. Wars. So that is nice, man. Star Wars live action recap. I think you're the most you've given the most in depth of each one so far. Is that a good I- thing? No, yeah, it's great, dude. I, I love I like sitting here. Like that's the thing that like, that's the whole reason why I created this is because I love hearing everybody. Like, everybody is like there's some obviously similar stuff because like it's the movie like everybody picks but like yeah. hearing the reasoning behind why you're picking these sort of things like everybody's different so it's like mm-hmm. it's nice to kind of get like a i feel like you get more of like a broader spectrum and like horizon of like each movie because like what i like about certain movies you might not like about certain movies so it's kind of cool to see the difference you know yeah and it's, it's very odd to see the difference because and star wars twitter is a complete mess like oh uh, I, I i can't i can't i, I post can't. and ghost on twitter like I can't. I can't stand reading some of the things i do in there sometimes but the problem is it's an echo chamber so so many mm-hmm. people who have these like ridiculous and outlandish feelings like they reiterate other like other people's and then they just stick with it yeah um, it's really weird to see one certain side of star wars twitter absolutely defend the sequels with their like entire life and then when Andor comes along, it was just, it's this weird split of people that like absolutely loved it and hated it. Like, and it was so weird because I, I like, it felt good to me because I'm like, okay, I'm not a part of any of these groups. Like right, I, I like yeah. what I like and I like what I don't like. I absolutely loved Andor. I was iffy about sequels. Like I wish so many more people would allow themselves to form their own opinions over this type of stuff. Because it's like, if you find into these groups, like you can really find yourself in an emotional, like in a psychological rabbit hole, because whatever you say, like if they agree with it, it's like there's just a bunch of people jumping in and saying, yeah, that's right. Or that's wrong. Like yeah. I can't stand Star Wars Twitter. I hate it. Yeah. It's, it's rough, dude. It's rough. And I wish, cause it seems like, you know, 
whether you're on one side or the other side, it seems like those are usually tend to be like the loudest people. And like yes. people kind of like you and I, I would, I would like to place us more in the middle. Like, yeah, sometimes mm-hmm. we love stuff and then sometimes we have gripes about stuff, but like, we're going to consume Star Wars and love Star Wars no matter what, you know, like, it's just like, yeah. maybe a, you know, that it's not going to be our favorite thing, but if we, if it's not our favorite, I don't know about you, but like, for me, like, I just don't talk about it. Like, yeah. You can see like on my channel, if you go back through, like, I don't have a lot of sequels content on it just because that's not what matters to me. I love everything else. You know, um, I'll still talk about them and be, I'm not going to be like, Oh, they're garbage or anything like that. But like, yeah. you know, there's, and, and that's just something that I don't, you don't see on Twitter. You don't see a lot of the middle ground people on Twitter. Cause it's not enticing, I guess. It's not like polarizing, like, Oh, like the last Jedi sucks or Andor sucks, you know, or Andor is the best Star Wars we've ever had period. Yeah. You know, um, you, those are kind of more eye catching things, mm-hmm. you know? So, yeah, I try my hardest to stay pretty neutral and just enjoy what I enjoy. And I'm not going to put a lot of my energy into something that I don't like. But I also like I have no problem discussing it openly with people. For like, sure. And that's what gets dangerous, especially on Star Wars Twitter is on both sides, regardless of who you are. When you display like differentiating opinions, you can get jumped on pretty badly. Even if you communicate it in the best way possible, even if you give reasons why and you're open about it, people will still hop on you and call you some of the worst names that you can imagine just because of that. Yeah, they'll um, throw you in a box for sure. And that's why like, I like things like TikTok or Instagram where I can post what I want to. Mm-hmm. And there's like, it seems like sometimes there's a choice. Like I can literally just leave those comments be and I, or I can interact with them. And that's, that's what I've tried to teach so many of my friends to do. I'm like, if there's an opinion that's differentiating from yours and like they, they're being disrespectful about it, you know what the easiest thing to do is just not respond. Like it's not yeah. that hard. You don't even have to delete it because someone else might want to. And then that starts the discussion with them. Um, which just works in your favor because it's more interaction for your channel, your account. Right. Just don't like respond. Like it's not that hard. I feel like people, like you're saying, they just, they get sucked in. They're like, Oh, this person, even if the person's like, cause I, I get that all the time, man, where somebody's just like, you can tell it's a troll comment. Mm -hmm. Um, and I get to, I, I have like a weird effect now where I laugh at the stuff. I'm like, yeah, like, Oh, this is garbage. Or like, Oh, you, you stupid or something like that. I just like, I'm like, you took the time to like, obviously like you like, especially too, when people are like, Oh, I don't care about your opinion. I'm like, well, you took enough time to like write about that. You didn't care. So obviously you care a little bit. Like, yeah. It cracks me up, man. But um, I've, done, I've done my best just to be careless. Like you can't yeah. let it get you. Like these are most of the mostly strangers I'll never meet in my life. Like I've got a lot to worry about as an adult. Like it's, it's who cares? Like it's, it's whatever. Dude, it's the easiest hack, man. So you're reading something on your phone. Also, shout out Revenge of the Sith. Um, just like, oh, you're getting heated. Mm. Turn it off. Yeah. Literally, it's it's a button click. Turn it off. Put the phone down. Go do something else. Go walk. Go take a walk. Go walk your pet or dog or whatever or your cat. Or, no, you don't walk cats, but you know what I'm saying. Like, just go you do can. something else. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess you can. There's there's people out there. Yeah. But um, so to kind of close this off, I do this thing called Minoc Minutes, where I ask you um pretty much a lot of quick questions like, what's your favorite this or who would you be in the Star Wars universe? You know, stuff kind of like that. Um, okay. So if you were in Star Wars, who would you be? Would you be a Jedi? Would you be a Sith, a smuggler, bounty hunter? What kind of faction would you want to be align yourself with? Uh, I would love to be a bounty hunter um, because they look the coolest. They fly the coolest ships um, and they kind of have the coolest life because they do whatever they want to. Right. right. Um, Yeah. So I'd have to say bounty hunter, preferably a Mandalorian bounty hunter. Very cool. Very cool. So if you had to be trained by a Jedi master or a Sith Sith Lord, what Jedi master or Sith Lord would you want to be trained by in the Star Wars universe? Uh, probably Count Dooku. Um, Not, dude, a lot of people say Count Dooku. I'm so surprised. Like that's, I've been getting a lot of counts lately. Just because he's easily the most um, level headed, especially when you consider like Sith or Jedi or anything like that. Mm-hmm. He is so far centrist. Like we, we see him do pretty evil things and there's at no point where the dark side overtakes him. Yeah. Um, he's purely doing everything that he believes, uh, or he's doing everything that he's doing because he believes it's right. Not because he's consumed by evil or has like selfish, like intentions. He, he he's genuinely out there for good intentions. No, that's mm-hmm. not to say he's a good guy by any means, but right. Um, he, he's he, good he, intentions, he, but a little bit extreme. Yeah. <laughs> powerful i love his dueling style everything about him i say he'd he'd easily be the one i wouldn't want yoda i feel like that'd be miserable um just listening to him talk would drive me (laughs) um i I also feel like i'd be overwhelmed i just want to give him a hug all the time yeah um 
Who would you want? Would you want Jedi Dooku or Sith Dooku? Either or. Either or. Okay. okay. I'd be content with both. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, I feel like he would he would be no nonsense and like be super strict, but like through that, I think you would become like, I mean, Qui-Gon was amazing, you know? He, yeah. He, he held his own against Darth Maul, who Darth Maul was in, I would say Qui-Gon wasn't in his prime at that point, And mm-hmm. Darth Maul would, would have been at his prime at that. Yeah. He held his own. So, you know, Hey, um, yeah. so you're, you're a Jedi or a Sith acolyte. Um, constructing your own lightsaber for the first time. What style lightsaber would you have? And depending on what style you have, what color slash colors would you want it to be? Uh, so I would do single. I wouldn't do double um, just because uh, it's always just been me. I think, I don't know. I love double those lightsabers, but at the same time, there's just something about them. It's like, okay, you're doing too much, but I love them at the same time. It's weird. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. You can appreciate uh, them, but you'd want to sing. Yeah. I got you. I got you. It would be a very weird combination between Mace Windu and Obi Wan. Um, I like the, sh- I absolutely love the style of Mace Windu's because it's it's just I, I don't know if you have ever seen that. You've probably seen. Yeah, the it's act. the gold with the gold inlays and all that stuff. Like the yeah. gold and the black leather on the back. I'm like, okay, yeah, this is this it's is, clean. Yeah, he's the got, saber's got, got some. The saber's got some swag to it. So it's yeah. got the drip. <laughs> I like. I, I want something flashy. Um, but I also like, um, not necessarily the hilt, but like the edge, the emitter design of Obi-Wan's where it's got like that thin little, you, you know mm-hmm. what I'm talking the, about. The, the neck where it goes. Yeah. yeah. yeah okay. If I had a healthy combination of those two, that's, that's probably the best way I would dis- describe my lightsaber style. Very cool. um, as much as I really love purple lightsabers, I feel like I'm stealing Mace Windu. Um, <laughs> I, I don't like, it's, it's my favorite lightsaber color just cause it's hey, lightsaber bros. I'm, I'm the exact same way. The um, same purple for sure. For life, I, I like. I feel guilty for saying it because I don't want to steal anyone else's style. Because I feel like he's the only one that can. Pull if you it want off. it, go for it, man. If you want purple, go for it. If you want green, go for it. It's, it's your Star Wars story. Screw Mace Windu. So he's I, he's I, the citizen. <laughs> I, I just hate to say it. I have to say either purple or red. Okay, very cool, very cool. Um, if you had to pick your top three favorite characters in Star Wars, they don't have to be in any order. Just like what characters are you vibing with right now? Uh, Darth Vader, Anakin Skywalker. I count them as the same person. I know everyone, you know, considers them two different people because they're psyche or whatever. I'm not going to play that garbage. Um, uh, Darth Vader, Anakin Skywalker. I count them as one. Jango Fett. Okay. He's, he's always been my favorite. Um, and the last one is always tough. I feel like it changes upon whichever movie I watch. It can go from Han Solo to Luke Skywalker to Obi Wan Kenobi. Like it's it's always been tough for me. So I'm gonna have to just whatever you're vibing with at the moment. Like it's it's the same thing yeah. with the Star Wars. Your favorite Star Wars movies. Like they always like they shuffle so much. You know. Yeah, mine stays pretty consistent with Empire and Attack of the Clones. But my last character, I'd honestly like. I'd probably have to say Luke. Luke, okay, okay. I have to stick with it. I know it's basic, but no, I mean, you're not going to get in. He's my favorite character, so you're not going to get any gripes from me. Yeah. Um, if you had to bring one force power into real life and only you could have it, what force power would you want to bring into real life? Uh, it depends. So, does mind trick only work on the weak minded? Yeah, so it has to apply the, to the laws of Star Wars. Okay. Um, I think the ability to move things, like, I don't want to say telekinesis, but the idea to, like, pick up things or, like, grab or pull, like, that that's that's the only, like, I wouldn't go Force Lightning because there's only one thing you can do with that, and I'm not going to be an awful person all the time. Yeah. It would um, be cool to have, but it doesn't have very many uses outside of, like, fighting, I guess, you know. I think I'd have to say either the ability to, like, move or separate and, like, just, just you know, telekinesis force um, okay. or force to choke. Okay, okay. Very cool. Just because I, I'd love to be at certain work meetings and then just under the table, just, you know. <laughs> just like <laughs> fuck around with your coworkers or something what? like that. Your friends. Friends. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So if you had to pick a Star Wars planet to live on, what Star Wars planet would you want to live on? Naboo. Easily. Naboo? Okay. Very nice. Um, Very nice. I hate Naboo fashion. Uh, I, I absolutely can't stand it. Um, I'd love Coruscant, but I feel like that would just like, if you're not rich, Coruscant probably sucks to live in. Yeah. yeah. Um, live underneath in the lower levels. Yeah. I'm all right. Um, that's, that's why I got to go Naboo. It's got the most natural beauty, but it has the big cities and everything like that. It's, it's cool. And I like Italy. I've been there plenty. Uh, so that's very cool. Yeah. 
Um, so we're going to create a Star Wars family for you. You get a mom, a dad, a best friend, and an arch nemesis. And we'll start with the mom and dad. Oh, boy. Um, see, this is tough because I know I'd get neglected somewhere down the line. Um, <laughs> but I'd have to say Han and Leia would be the coolest mom and dad. Okay. Very cool. Um, what else do I get? Sorry. Uh, best friend and then an arch nemesis. Oh, I don't have been a bit good best friend. Um, I, you can still change it. You can still change it if you want. <laughs> uh, best friend, I would have to say Django Fett. We'll go with that. Ooh, nice. Nice. Yeah, I feel like he'd have your back for sure. Yeah, absolutely, he would. And then you've got an arch nemesis. Hmm. Job of the Hutt. Interesting. I feel Different. like that would be a good one. He has resources, you know. Different, but someone that I'm really against odds with. And you wouldn't think because he's just a fat slug, but like me and Django taking on Jabba's empire, that would be cool. Well, Jabba would strike me as like oddly like the really popular kid that has a lot of friends to like do his bidding for him or something like mm -hmm. that, you know. Yeah. So or he just has like he's not even like a popular kid. He just has like a lot of money or something like that, and he can like buy his friends mm -hmm. or whatever. He's one of those kids that you don't know why he's popular, but he just is. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the final question that I'm going to ask you and that I ask everybody is: like Lucasfilm called you up and was mm -hmm. like, Noah, we need an idea for a movie, a video game, whatever genre you want to pitch to them, but we need an idea. What? genre would you pitch them and what is the loose story of what you would pitch them uh well, this is an easy one for me um even though i have my own fan films and ideas that i'm actually trying to get off the ground um later ones obviously so i can be in, in them um but i had this idea a little while back for a movie an actual movie where they would essentially stop production of the mandalorian season three right now cut it just to be what it is um, and I would like to see a two-part movie um, about Din Djarin reuniting Mandalore um, and Ooh. retaking from the little fragments of the Empire that are still there. That'd be um, sick. I would love to see the first movie kind of more so about them teaming up and getting everyone together um, and kind of the arguments that they have over the Darksaber and all this, like all this BS, and all, you know, just back and forth. Um, but then uh, episode two would purely about them finally you know gaining traction getting off the ground and then going to storm it and take it back okay. um i would love to throw ahsoka in there just because um yeah why not <laughs> obviously she has a lot of history with mandalore and everything like that um but seeing boba fett bo katan all these like massive like big deal mandalorians make an effort to take back their planet and kind of start revitalizing it that i think would be really cool and i've tried to talk with other people to see if this is an idea that anyone else has had in their head and then as far as i'm aware nobody has gone in that direction so very cool i would absolutely love to pursue that and it would be a movie right you said you wanted a, like a two-part movie mm -hmm. yep okay uh, yeah. very cool dude very cool well thank you again for coming on and talking star wars with me man let the good people know where they can find you at uh, you can find me on Instagram at Mauer.Noah, um, TikTok at Noah4517, um, LinkedIn at Noah Mauer. Um, I don't have MySpace anymore, so sorry about that. But, but. <laughs> RIP MySpace, man. RIP MySpace. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, again, thank you for coming on, and thank you guys for watching, and as always, may the Force be with you.